Hello, I'm Station Manager Sue Bunting. I work out of the Service Control Centre here in Potten. My role includes the support of control staff with their training, their maintenance of skills, their control licences, as well as supporting any new emergency control operators that join the service. Let's take a look at what the service has done since the last update. Bad weather always leads to a spike in 999 calls received by our control operators and this autumn has been particularly busy. On the 18th of September, a lightning strike caused a roof fire at two properties in Corfe Mullen and nearly 90 emergency calls were received over seven hours about flooding in and around Swindon. The north of the service was also badly affected by heavy rain on the 13th of October with over 30 999 calls about flooding in the Swindon and Royal Wharton Bassett areas. A week later, when Storm Babbitt was at its peak, there were nearly 70 emergency calls in one morning and firefighters made six rescues from vehicles that had driven through flood water. Storm Kieran in early November brought heavy rain and very strong winds to the region. The most significant incident we dealt with was at a holiday park in Burton Bradstock where the sea breached the flood defences. Firefighters worked with Dorset Police, South Western Ambulance Service, Dorset Council and His Majesty's Coast Guard to search nearly 200 static caravans with around 70 people moved to safety. In October, the service took part in a three-day flood deployment exercise organised by the National Fire Chiefs Council. 300 operational personnel from 14 different fire and rescue services and partner agencies were involved. The Service Control Centre played its part by mobilising a team of seven technical rescue firefighters to South Wales from Poole, Stratton and Weymouth. On the 10th of November, crews from Swindon and Stratton fire stations took part in a search and rescue exercise at Cote Water Lakes in Swindon. This demonstrated the effective use of our water rescue capabilities in a multi-agency environment, working alongside colleagues from local voluntary organisations and the Coast Guard Rescue Helicopter. It has also been a busy time for other types of training, with our resilience team planning for and undertaking exercises with a range of partners, including the military and the police, to ensure we're prepared for and able to respond to a variety of different incidents. Ten new incident commanders completed their Level 1 validation course in October, with three days of hands-on experience at the Fire Service College following two days of knowledge input at our command suite in Salisbury. This exposed them to a multitude of scenarios, allowing them to develop their decision-making at incidents. Our prevention and protection teams have been working with Magna Housing to develop fire safety videos targeted at both residents and housing managers. The Housing Association helped us create two realistic rooms a lounge and a bedroom at Westmore's training centre to demonstrate how easily fires can start in the home and how quickly they can develop. The films will also feature on our social media and the rooms have been used for training by our fire investigators. A sprinkler system fitted in 2022 meant a fire in Pool on the 16th of November was quickly extinguished. Firefighters were called to Sturt Court after a fire broke out in a ninth floor flat. Thankfully, the sprinklers meant damage was contained to the kitchen and the occupant was uninjured. The autumn term is always a busy time for our road safety team as they deliver safe drive, stay alive events to students at schools and colleges across our service area. We also continue to support road safety education for the military through the Survive the Drive initiative. A special video aimed at primary school children was released in October to promote the importance of staying safe during Halloween, Bonfire Night, Diwali and other celebrations. 
There was also a competition to check viewers had understood the messages, with a VIP fire station visit offered as the prize. Carbon Monoxide Awareness Week was in November and we supported this through our social media channels. We continue to work with Wales and West Utilities and SGN to provide carbon monoxide detectors to vulnerable people over a five year period. Another successful fire station open day was held in September, this time at Ferndown. This was very well supported and raised much needed funds for the firefighters charity. The independent review into the workplace culture at Dorset and Wiltshire Fire and Rescue Service was published on the 17th of October. This was a difficult read, but a really valuable thing for us to do, and we are grateful to the review team for holding a mirror up to our service. We are now focused on working with our staff in how we can take forward the action plan to continue improving our organisational culture, ensuring this is a positive, and inclusive workplace for everyone. Work is progressing to enhance the crewing model at Amesbury Fire Station from on-call only to a mix of on-call and day duty firefighters. This is to improve fire cover in the area and provide resilience to nearby communities. We hope to go live with the new system in early 2024 and building work is due to start to make the fire station more inclusive for all staff now and in the future. The village of Pusey came to a standstill on the 10th of November for the funeral of watch manager Mark Hillier. He was tragically killed in a road traffic collision on the 12th of October whilst responding to a fire call at Pusey Fire Station. As the cortege made its way to the church, the roads were lined by local residents, firefighters from our own service and also Surrey, Hampshire and the Isle of Wight, London, Suffolk and the United States Air Force, corporate staff and retired personnel. After the church service, the cortege made its way to Salisbury via the A345, where nearly 20 fire service vehicles were stationed along the route in tribute. Firefighters and corporate staff lined up by Salisbury Fire Station as a minute silence in Mark's honour was observed across the service before a smaller cortege escorted the hearse to Salisbury Crematorium. Our thoughts are very much with Mark's family, colleagues and friends at this difficult time. Our most recent passing out parade was held at Salisbury Fire Station on the 29th of September for on-call firefighters who had completed all their acquisition training courses. Fire control operators also take part in these events when they complete their training, which is great to see. I hope you found this update interesting. Any more information can be found on our social media or our website. I'd like to wish you all a very happy Christmas and a very good new year.